normally I'm up pretty late and then I get up kind of late morning normally. So when I actually okay. eat, it's normally either late morning or right around noon for the first time. So I love brunch. Brunch oh, is really? my favorite meal of the day. Yeah, yeah. Okay, absolutely. but like normally what time you, you, you eat your brunch or what time is your first it, meal? It depends. So for me personally, when I first, and I know some people are like this, but when I first wake up, I can't eat right away. Um, I need like at least an hour or two before I eat anything to like let my stomach settle a little bit. Okay. So lots of times when I wake up, I'll just have a cup of coffee to kind of kickstart the day. But so again, for me, brunch is anywhere between noon and 1 p.m. is probably the first time that I eat. Wow, it's a superpower. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> a ver, se supone que todos los demás, bueno, yo por ejemplo, desayuno súper temprano, pero Dan Tom no. Él se levanta tarde y dice que el brunch es su primera comida del día y que come por ahí de las 12, una, que deja que su estómago se asiente y entonces ya, ahora sí le, le, le da algo de poder al estómago. And, and what about, for example, for me, I'm not like, like this. I need to drink, I mean, maybe a tea or something. And yeah. of course, I need oatmeal, right? Mm -hmm. And what about oh, so, you? If, you're, if, if your first meal is in the brunch, which kind of food do you eat or you prefer? So I, I, I do love breakfast food. Um, I just, I happen to eat it later in the day. But lots of times um, when I first wake up, I'll eat anywhere from four to six eggs. Um, lots of times I put uh, Frank's hot sauce all over the eggs. I go crazy. And then I will also have oatmeal. I love oatmeal. And then it depends on kind of what, fruit I want that day you know maybe I'll have I really really I love strawberries I love blueberries a banana is probably my favorite to kind of kick start the day um, and then I'm trying to be better about eating more greens or in this case drinking more greens so lots of times I'll have like a, a wheatgrass shake or something like that it's normally a pretty big meal right when I wake up but so I try to get a little bit of everything I have my proteins uh, my carbs my fruit and my vegetables uh, all in my brunch Wow, that's why yeah. you eat, you 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 eat like really. I mean, you eat a lot. Six, four to six eggs. My God. Yeah. Too much. I love I love eggs. I never get sick of them. Never. I've been eating like I eat. My God. Well, probably not every day because obviously on the road it's a little bit different sometimes. But yeah. I I love eggs, and I can just eat them and like. Six eggs is not filling at all to me. And the whole egg, too. <laughs> oh my God. No, none of that egg white crap. I want the, I want the whole egg. <laughs> I'm part of your group, so I need to translate it. Oh, good. Eh, a ver, esto es como una cosa muy chistosa porque eh, Adam, a pesar de que le encanta el brunch, él hace un desayuno tardío. Y cuando hace su desayuno tardío, le gusta comerse de cuatro a seis huevos. Y aparte ustedes dicen, ah, bueno, pues es que este muchacho come muchísimo huevo y ya está. No. También le mete a la avena y le gustan mucho las fresas. Y, por supuesto, trata de comer mucho verde entonces y tomar mucho verde. Entonces, por ejemplo, hay un, hay un eh, se, se, se toma un todo lo que pueda tener esto, eh, cuestión de, de, de verdura adentro y fruta también. Entonces, ya saben, eso es superpoder que Adam tiene. Es porque le come y le come bien. So, you were talking about this is kind of different when you are on the road. Which kind yeah. of things there change when you're on the road? So, um you know, obviously a lot of it depends on, you know, what time uh, we end up leaving, what time we end up traveling to the next town. Uh, sometimes we are able to eat a breakfast in a hotel, but sometimes the hotels uh, might not have exactly what we're looking for. Most of the times they do have, you know, eggs, bacon, oatmeal, all that stuff that we are able to eat. But sometimes we're in hotels uh, where we don't. So in that case, lots of times, uh, a similar thing where I'll just have like a protein bar right when I wake up in that case, because it's not a huge meal. But I'll wait, once we get on the road and I actually have a proper meal, I love Chipotle. I love Chipotle. So, really? And I get the exact same thing every single time. <laughs> a, a double steak bowl with white rice, um, vegetables, black beans, and then the mild sauce, and then guacamole on top of it. I get that. <laughs> I love Chipotle. I'll, I'll probably eat Chipotle at least once a week. And okay. that's so filling and so good. And I love steak. So that, I love that on the road. And, and then if we don't have that as an option, if it's super late, you know, something like a Denny's or an IHOP or okay. it's going to be open really late that has 
a bunch of different options uh, of food to eat. And funny enough, lots of times when I go to a Denny's or an IHOP, I always end up getting breakfast food anyway. That's when I'll eat my eggs. Got to make sure I get my eggs in that day. <laughs> That's great. A <laughs> ver, la, la cosa cambia un poquito eh, cuando está en eh, de gira. Básicamente, él necesita los huevitos. Así que normalmente en, el, en los hoteles en donde se quedan, pues tienen este tipo de comidas, ¿no? Que son huevos y avena y, y salchichas o tocino, lo que sea. Pero eh, si no hay, él, su restaurante favorito es Chipotle. Entonces, él donde cuando puede y como puede, él va a Chipotle. Y dice, come, o sea, imagínense, es que es una máquina de, 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 para devorar, mi querido Adam. Le gustan estos bowls con un montón de cosas, o sea, hasta frijoles. Le gustan los frijoles a Adam Cole. That's great. Uh, y cuando no está de Chipotle, también va a I Hope o lo que sea, pero él necesita sus huevitos. Así, huevitos a la, a, a la mano. And, and what about a cheat meal? Do you have a yeah. cheat meal? Yes, uh, absolutely. So it, it kind of all depends on what I'm in the mood for. Um, but generally speaking, if I'm thinking I want to go crazy, um, I love hot wings. And, and like really, really hot ones, uh, like really, really spicy. So, um, really? Spicy. Do you like spicy food? I love spicy. Lots of times when I have an itch for spicy food, um, and I know it's not crazy hot, but like I'll just eat jalapenos out of the jar sometimes just for a little bit of spice. And then also anytime I make like a turkey burger or a Angus burger, whatever it is, I have habanero peppers. Um, that I will cut up and then put a little bit of those on the burger as well. Uh, but I, I mean, oh man, as far as cheat meals, like I love, uh, I love wings. I love pizza. Um, I also love, I love crab legs, just doused in butter, just dipping those in the <laughs> butter. I can eat them over and over and over again. Um, that is a cheat meal. Yeah. Yeah. With all that, butter, with all that butter for sure. Yeah. So, <laughs> Uh, oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, I love all. You're making me so hungry. I'm so hungry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for yeah. Me, me, me too as well. Yeah, I love hamburgers and, and, and pizza as well. So I'm part of your group now. Oh, eh, entonces, great. Para, que, para que lo sepan, Adam Cole también se avienta sus comiditas. Sus comiditas ahí de, de, de pues, le gustan las alitas, las pizzas. Y, y básicamente le encanta el picante. O sea, no lo podremos pensar, pero le encanta el picante. Así que ya saben. Porque todos pueden empezar, no debe llevar una vida super sana. Uh -uh. También se avienta sus cheat meals. So, um, let's talk about now NXT. Yes. We talked that you have been champion for over an e a year, right? And first of all, congratulations about that. Thank But you. are you, now are you worried about the, uh, on backlot brawl against the Velveteen Dream? So, um, there's a part of me that is a little bit worried. Um, but truthfully, the fact is, I have... I've wrestled the Velveteen Dream before. I've defended the NXT Championship against Velveteen Dream before, uh, and I beat him. Uh, so as far as I'm concerned, I, I already beat him. I should be facing somebody else. But here we are, and I have to fight the Velveteen Dream again, uh, this time in a different scenario. This time we're in a backlot brawl. So obviously that throws a, a giant wrench into the plans. Uh, I know bell to bell that nobody can beat me when the NXT Championship is on the line, but this match is so different. Uh, I can promise the WWE Universe this match will be unlike anything they have ever seen before this Sunday. It's going to be a spectacle. It's going to be something that everybody wants to tune in for. Uh, but again, I am confident with all of my heart that I will walk away still the NXT champion no matter what I have to do. Uh, the, the NXT championship is the most important thing in the entire world to me. So I'm going to make sure with all of my power, whether it's in a ring, whether it's in a parking lot, whether it's on the moon, it doesn't matter. I, I'm, I'm going to successfully defend my NXT championship once again. And I'm definitely going to do it this Sunday at TakeOver In Your House. Great. A ver, la pregunta fue, eh, nosotros sabemos que ha sido eh, campeón por más de un año, bueno, por un año. Y tiene, ahora se viene en el escenario algo demasiado, bueno, que, 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 que pone en el panorama aquí, eh, lo sacude un poco, que es una riña de Seth contra Velvet in Dream. Entonces yo le pregunté que si se sentía nervioso. Me dice que un poco pero que ya tuvo, eh, o sea, ya tuvo un encuentro con él. Sin embargo, esta vez los cosas van a ser diferentes. Pero que él lo que va a buscar es dar todo lo, de, lo mejor y para sostener ese título y que ese título se quede en casita. 
Okay, that's great. So, the Undisputed Era is one of the most dominant factions in recent WWE history. And at some point, all of all for you, um, all four of you were dressed in gold. But let's imagine for a moment, if you had to compare yourselves to any other faction in history, mm. who would that be? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. Um, a lot of people have seen comparisons from a lot of different factions in, in the Undisputed Era. Um, for example, um, the invasion aspect, the shocking the system, the us all coming from somewhere else and, and kind of taking over NXT. A lot of people see comparisons to the NWO. Um, yeah. A lot of people see comparisons with our attitudes and we do what we want, when we want, say what we want, when we want. They see comparisons to Degeneration X. But I think the Undisputed Era probably shares the most similarities with the Four Horsemen. Um, the Four Horsemen were, I mean, everybody knows, one of the greatest factions yeah. of all time. At one point, all of them were dripped in gold and had championship gold. Um, and they, they fought countless uh, different versions of different teams. And they always, everyone was gunning for the Four Horsemen. Everyone wanted to get their hands on the Four Horsemen. And I, I really do see that comparison with the Undisputed Era. We have problems with everybody in NXT. Unless you're in our group, we have a problem with you. And they have a problem with us. So I definitely see a lot of comparisons there. I get why people uh, make, that, make that comparison. Um, so yeah, I, I would say the Four Horsemen, we probably share the most in common with them. Okay. La pregunta aquí fue que eh, ahora, bueno, son una facción, una de las más importantes en la historia, y que si ellos se compara, bueno, que si él se compara con alguna otra facción. Y me dijo que la gente normalmente los compara con varios, con The Generation X, pero que él cree que eh, se compara mucho más con los cuatro jinetes, definitivamente, porque son los únicos que han tenido los, los, los oros, o sea, y han estado en la misma posición que él. Así que los cuatro jinetes ya lo saben. So, uh, you have been defended your title against SmackDown and Raw Superstars, like Seth Rollins and Daniel Bryan. If you had to pick one current superstar in all WWE to defend your title, who would that be? Great question. Um, so there's one man who immediately comes to mind, and he's someone that I've faced before, but I've never faced in, in WWE. Um, and that man is AJ Styles. Um, I, I fought AJ Styles on two separate occasions, uh, one time in Canada, one time in Philadelphia. And both times AJ Styles beat me. Uh, so that is a, that's a loss I would love to get back. Um, I will say, even in a losing effort, I look at AJ Styles as one of the very, very best, not just currently, but one of the best to, to ever be a professional wrestler. He's unbelievable. He's phenomenal. He's, he fits his tagline perfectly. Um, so he's a guy, and, and especially with the NXT Championship being viewed as such a respectable title, and people know that when this title's on the line, they're going to see a great bell-to-bell -bell pro wrestling match Uh, AJ Styles is right there with the very best. So I, I would love, I would love the chance to defend my NXT championship against AJ. I think it'd be a match that a lot of people would love to see. And it would be a really, really sweet victory under my belt, if I do say so myself. <laughs> oh my God, I want to watch that match. Really, it sounds amazing. Yeah. Yes, AJ Styles is amazing. And um, well, I want to see that, really. Uh, awesome. I la pregunta fue que sabemos que ha defendido su título contra muchas superestrellas, ya sea de, eh, la, de Raw y de SmackDown, como Seth Rollins y Daniel Bryan, pero queremos saber contra quién, contra quién se, o sea, si, si pudiera defender su título, contra quién sería. Y él me dijo que AJ Styles, porque ha, ha estado, bueno, lo enfrentó dos veces fuera de, de, de acá, y que fue en Filadelfia. Um, y básicamente, pues necesita tenerlo nuevamente en el ring porque lo considera fenomenal como todos nosotros. Y la verdad es que yo también, a mí me encantaría ver ese gran match. I want to see that match. I want I, it. I do. No, I want I, it. We got to make it happen. We got to make it happen. <laughs> okay. So, um, I want to know about this. Everybody yeah. chants, uh, Adam Cole, baby, right? Uh, right. your, your entrance and I want to know the story about that oh sure sure absolutely that's a good story that's a good question um so um very early on in my career 
um, I was trying to think of things that I could do or characteristics that I could add to my character. I was a bad guy at the time. And I remember I was um, watching an independent show um, and Joey Mercury, uh, he was Joey Matthews uh, on the independent scene. He was wrestling at a Maryland independent show. And I remember um, he was beating a guy up and he kept stopping and throwing both of his arms in the air, his fist in the air, and he would go, Joey Matthews, Joey Matthews, over and over again. And I thought it was so brilliant. I was like, okay, so if someone's at this wrestling show, and maybe they're not a diehard wrestling fan, and they don't know anybody, if they leave, they're going to remember one name. They're going to remember his, because he just kept yelling his own name over and over and over again. I was new. I wanted people to remember my name. So I thought, oh, this is perfect. Um, so I remember, and then the Bebe part was added, big Y2J fan, uh, you know, was, he was a guy that I really studied when I was younger. And when he would do the, come on, Bebe, really obnoxiously over the top, I was like, oh, that's, so I think that's where the entire thing ended up coming from. But I remember early in my career, in like 2009, 2010, I started doing it. I would do the two fingers up and yell, Adam Cole, Bebe, and either people would boo or not do anything at all. It was not a popular catchphrase whatsoever. It was just part of my persona. And then somewhere along the way, I think it was 2014 or 2015, some people started to do it. And then it started to catch on and more and more people started to yell it to the point where when I debuted in NXT, had never wrestled in WWE before, attacked Drew McIntyre, stood at the top of the ramp and said, screw it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna try it. And I did it and then 15,000 people did it with me. That was so cool. So uh, it's amazing how it's caught on as well as it has. Uh, and yeah, now it, it's a big part of defining really who Adam Cole is, is the Adam Cole Bebe champ. That's great. That's great, really. Uh, a ver, bueno, resulta que le pre ahora la pregunta fue acerca de dónde venía el, el, la, el canto de Adam Cole Bebe. Y me dice que a principios de, de su carrera, él estaba eh, presenciando algo que le cambió la vida, básicamente. Estaba con Joe Matthew, o sea, estaba presenciando un match de Joe Matthew, y cuando golpeaba al otro, estaba repitiendo su nombre. Y a él se le hizo como algo, esto está cool, o sea, la gente se podría quedar con esto en la memoria, ¿no? Y dijo, bueno, pues yo quiero que, que la gente se quede con mi nombre, y cuando, que los fans sepan mi nombre. Y el Bay Bay fue añadido por eh, J, eh, 2 j I, I, two, yeah. Y, two, yeah, uh, yeah. Por, por Chris Jericho. Y entonces, a partir de ahí, o sea, que fue desde el 2012, él lo hace. Así que ya lo sabemos. Y, y él, o sea, él dijo, cuando yo, yo voy a salir, y si la gente lo empieza a hacer, lo voy a hacer. O sea, esto les, les va a gustar. Y si no, pues me voy a casa. Pero Chris Jericho fue el que, el que trajo también el Bay Bay a casa. And, and I love it. I love it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. It's very, very fun. It is, it is, and it's memorable, and that's important. Right, right. Well, and that too, I, I know, um, not to drag it on, but it was the same thing with uh, the boom as well. That was kind of a mistake. And the, uh, in my entrance too, I do boom and point to myself, and then everyone does that now too. And that's just a part of the Undisputed Era theme song. And now that's caught on as well. So it's really cool. I'll do the, everyone does the boom with me, and then everyone does Adam Cole, Bebe afterwards. No it's way. awesome. So it was yeah. a mistake. Yeah, it was just a mistake. So I, I was in, so we rehearse entrances every time before television. And I remember one day we were rehearsing the Undisputed Era entrance. And just as a joke, I just did the boom at the time of the song. Um, and someone had said to me, hey, you should, you should do that tonight. You should just try it, see if it catches on. And then next thing you know, that's become just as big, if not bigger than the Adam Gold Bebe. It's amazing. I know, I know it's the boom. It's one of my right. favorite parts as well. Oh, la, good, good, good. Y nos acaba de confesar algo padrísimo. Resulta que el boom fue, fue una, una broma, o sea, fue por error. Entonces, eh, él entró y dijo, bueno, lo voy a hacer. Y alguien le dijo, oye, creo que funcionó esto. Lo deberías de hacer. Y vamos a ver qué, qué, qué pasa. Y ya se incorporó, o sea, se incorporó el boom con el canto, con el day day. Y ahora es toda una historia. Esto es histórico. Perfect. Uh, now, let's play a game. Okay? Okay. I will tell you a name and you have to tell me the first word that comes to your mind. Ooh, okay. 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 
For example, if I say um, burrito, you can say chipotle. I don't know. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> okay? Okay. So, the Undisputed Era. Undisputed. Undisputed. Great. Undisputed. Charlotte Flair. Uh, excellent. Okay. Sorry. I have to translate. I forgot that part. Oh, oh it's okay. <laughs> a ver, eh, ahora estamos jugando el, el jueguito que a todos nos encanta, que es, eh, yo le digo una palabra, bueno, le digo el nombre de una superestrella y él me tiene que decir qué es lo que piensa. O sea, la primera palabra que se le venga a la mente. Entonces, le, le, le dije, de un despierto y él me dijo, indisputable. Charlotte Flair, excelente. Eh, Finn Balor. Demon. Demon, demonio. Finn Balor, demonio. Asuka. Oh, dangerous. Peligrosa. Otis. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bianca Belair. Ooh, uh, prodigy. Prodigy? Yeah, prodigy. Yeah, very, very um, uh, a natural, a natural. Okay. Yeah, Perfect. yeah. A ver, yeah. entonces, nos quedamos con Otis, que ya sabemos, eh, y Bianca Belair me dijo que era natural y prodigia, ¿ok? Mm -hmm. eh, Seth Rollins. Messiah. El Mesías. Yeah. Drew McIntyre. Ooh. Uh, deserving. Se, bueno, merecido. Yeah. Eh, Asuka. Oh, sorry. Asuka, I, I asked you before. Um, Brock Lesnar. <sighs> Beast. Bestia. Beast. Oof. Bestia. Yeah. 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 Scary. Scary. And the rock. Oh, uh, electrifying. Electrificante la roca. Electrifying. <laughs> okay. So uh, this is important for us, for Latinos. Okay. This question. Yeah. If you had to choose a Latino superstar to join in the spirit era, who would, that, uh, who would you choose? Oh, that's so, so I'm such a fan of so many. Um, yeah. Like uh, you know, Garza has been unbelievable. He's done such, he, he reminds me of Eddie Guerrero. He's, he's so, so talented. Like just a natural, has this natural charisma, just oozes this charisma. Uh, Umberto is amazing. I mean, what a athlete, uh, works really, really hard, does unbelievable things, but... If I had to pick one, I'm gonna, I would have to pick Andrade. I'd have to pick Andrade. He, uh, I, I've seen him have matches with people um, that absolutely blew my mind and he makes it look effortless. He makes it look so easy because he's that good. Uh, again, when we talk about charisma and natural ability, and uh, the things he can, he can do anything. He can do anything in the ring. Um, his skill set is second to none. I actually, I know he's been doing amazing, but I actually think Andrade is underrated. I, I, I think he has even more, I think he could be universal champion someday. I think he is um, beyond talented, beyond skilled. I know people who are fans of his know how good he really is, but a lot of the wrestlers know how good he really is too. So if I could add, Anybody, I would say Andrade. He'd be my pick. That's great, and 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 he's right for me as well. I think we have a lot of talent. Very. I'm, I'm talking about like Latina, and yes, we we are supporting our team. But of yes, indeed, we have a lot of talent now. It, it's true. It's and true. It's Very talented. Uh, a ver, la pregunta fue que si él tuviera que escoger a, a algún latino para unirse a la facción, ¿quién sería? Entonces me dijo algo padrísimo. Me dijo que hay muchísimos latinos que admira y que le encantan. Por ejemplo, Ángel Garza, que le recuerda muchísimo a Eddie Guerrero. Y Humberto Carrillo, que es un gran atleta. Pero que si tuviera que escoger a alguien, sin duda alguna, sería Andrade. Porque hace que las luchas parezcan fáciles y que la neta tiene un montón de talento. Y en eso estamos de acuerdo. Entonces, eh, yes, you're right. And uh, okay, so let's move now. Uh, we get a few questions, few questions from fans. Are sure. You ready? Yes, absolutely. Great. Uh, the first one is um, El Grandi on Twitter asks, "Have you imagined in the Peter era being victorious at WrestleMania?" Yes, yes, I, I have thought about that. So, um, 
Because again, fortunately for us, as the Undisputed Era, we've gotten through a lot of really cool things. You know, at one point, the prophecy came true and all of us had every championship we could hold in, uh, in NXT at one point. That was really cool. Um, we, we, we've main event SmackDown. We've main evented Raw. We've had great showings at Survivor Series. We've headlined takeover after takeover after takeover. But yes, the, the chance for the Undisputed Era to wrestle at the biggest show of them all at WrestleMania and really show the entire world what we're capable of would be amazing. Um, and if we would get the chance to wrestle at WrestleMania, we would definitely walk out the winners because of how much we have to prove. So yes, we're wrestling at WrestleMania, being victorious at WrestleMania would be incredible, would be incredible. Next one, please. Next WrestleMania, I know. We want yes. to see you there. Yes, please, please. A ver, aquí la pregunta fue que, eh, lo voy a decir completo para que se sigan animando en aventar sus preguntas, por favor. Dice el Granty en Twitter y pregunta que si se ha imaginado la idea de toda la, de todo en Spirit Era triunfando en WrestleMania. Y él me dice que por supuesto que sí, o sea, que en Survivor Series se lo llevaron todo y que están esperando esa gran oportunidad para romperla con todo. Ok, the second um, is Adri Martoficial on Instagram asks, okay. uh, I have been your fan for a long time and you have been my example since I first lay my eyes on you. Do you have any advice for me since I am in the process of becoming a wrestler? Greetings yes. from Spain. Oh, from Spain. Oh, oh, awesome, awesome. That's a great question. Um, So this is the answer that I give, and it sounds very broad, but I can't tell you how important this is. So if you're, if you're listening, the person who asked this question, I, I mean every bit of this. Uh, first and foremost, pro wrestling needs to be your number one priority. Uh, if, if you make it a hobby or you make it something that you do on the side and you're kind of interested, you're going to get kind of okay results. Because uh, for most of us who get into pro wrestling, we do it because we love it. And we want to go as far as we possibly can. So train as much as you can. Uh, once you start uh, actually going to a wrestling school, go to that wrestling school every single day. Travel to every single show that you have the chance to go to. Uh, study. Watch wrestling as much as you can. Learn. Ask questions uh, to the right people. You know, make sure you're constantly surrounded by it. And nine times out of ten, people who put everything into this job get something out of it. Uh, the second and almost more important is this is the example I use as, as I say, uh, be someone that people want to ride in a car with. Be someone that people like to be around outside of the job. Uh, because again, there are so many talented, talented individuals now uh, from, from all different uh, places all over the world in, in pro wrestling. So now more than ever, you need to be dependable. You need to be accountable. And you need to be someone that, that people can count on and the people want to help. So it's really kind of a long-winded way of saying be a good person. But I, I can't tell you how important that is. It, it makes all the difference in the world to be someone that uh, people respect and that, that people want to help out. So be someone that people want to ride in a car with. Oh, my God. That's fantastic. That's a good oh, okay. message. And it's not um, just for wrestling. I think it's for life. It's a message, a message for life, really. Agreed, agreed. And, it's, and I know that's why it sounds um, so incredibly broad, but I can't tell, like, again, there will be moves that you learn and, and little tricks of the trade that you'll learn along the way. But if you have those traits, the other things will, will come easily. You know, sometimes it takes people longer than others to learn certain things. But if you have those two things down, you will see success. I promise. I promise. So great. Ok. Uh, a ver, um, eh, pregunta aquí Adri Marto Oficial, que bueno, dice que siempre ha sido un fan de Adam Cole y que um, necesita y, blah, 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 siempre un consejo porque está en proceso para ser un wrestler. Saludos desde España. Y, y la verdad es que Adam nos dijo un mensaje increíble que básicamente tienes que hacer tu prioridad, la lucha, o sea, la lucha. El wrestling tiene que ser tu prioridad. Y porque si tú lo ves como un hobby, entonces vas a ser un mediocre. Y que, y que aparte de todo esto tienes que estudiar, o sea, tienes que estudiar, tienes que ver, tienes que asistir, tienes que preguntar, tienes que vivir eso. Y una vez que tengas todo eso, lo que tienes que hacer es 
convertirte en una muy buena persona. Alguien con quien, esto está increíble, y esta es una frase memorable, alguien con quien quisieras estar en el coche, en el auto. Entonces, y esto aplica para todo. Si tú quieres ser exitoso en cualquier cosa, tienes que aplicarte y hacer las cosas y convertirte en una buena persona porque ese es el truco de todo. Ok, I think I have to close with this message because it's, it's, it's amazing. Oh, and, good. It reflects a lot of, uh, and it means about you, really. It's, it means a oh. lot. Well, thank you. And the, the truth is, again, that just, uh, you know, so many people uh, have helped me along the way. And it's a beautiful thing uh, when a group of people share the exact same passion and they work together towards a common goal. And the same person who helped you, then you pass it along and then you help the person who's trying to move up the ranks as well. That's the, that's the beautiful process of not just pro wrestling, but of life as well. Exact same thing. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Of course. And um, let's now. This is a funny game as well. Okay. So this is the last step of the interview. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And let's suppose that I'm your delivery girl, and we'll shop your girl for your groceries. Which Ooh. are the four items that I can never forget to buy? Oh. Okay. Um. Okay. First and foremost, eggs, eggs. which I think no surprise. Um. Almond milk because I can't drink regular milk, it upsets my stomach. So almond milk, okay. um, let's say, I'm gonna say strawberries. Yeah. Also, love them so much. And then let's get cheat meal style. Um, cinnamon Toast Crunch, the cereal. Oh! I love Toast Crunch, it's so good, so I love good. It. So Great. I need that, I need that too, yeah. <laughs> Great choice, perfect. Good. Uh, y pasemos a la última actividad donde yo soy la chica que le hace las compras y tengo que comprar, bueno, hay cuatro cosas que necesito comprar. Entonces, eh, me dijo que los huevos, huevos por supuesto, si no, ya sabemos que se come cuatro o seis huevos el muchacho, eh, la leche de almendras, porque no puede tomar otra leche, eh, las fresas, que le encantan las fresas, y esto que me encanta, el cinnamon, es un, o sea, es un cereal que me fascina y que nos fascina. Así que, Great election. That's yeah, great. I think so too. I'm set. I'm set for the week. If I have those four things, I'm good to go. And yeah. strawberries as well. Berries. I love berries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. same here. Same here. So, so good. Thank you so much. Really, of thank course. You so much for this. Yeah, thank you for having me on. It was a pleasure. Hopefully I come on again sometime. Yes, please. Yeah. I, we yeah. want to see you uh, soon here. And you know, this is your casa. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very That means a lot. Thank you. And whenever you want. Awesome. Awesome. I would love to. I would love to. Okay. Thank you so much, Adam. And great. You're, Good luck there. You're very welcome. Thank you.